The focus of ZBrush has always been on the creative aspect of digital art. To that end, the surface materials and the material editing interface has been designed so that artists can maximize their creativity without having to worry about the technical aspects of materials and shading. In this movie, we'll take a look at ZBrush's unique matte cap materials and how you can use them to communicate your creative concept and your ideas to the outside world. There are two main types of materials that you can use in ZBrush. You have standard materials and matte cap materials. Both are found in the material palette. Standard materials, such as the basic material, use a number of sliders to control aspects such as the diffuse quality, the specularity, and so on and so forth. When you change the position of the lighting in the scene, standard materials react in real time. Matte cap materials, such as the red wax material, actually have the lighting baked into the material itself. Matte cap stands for material capture. Matte cap materials use a source image to determine how lighting will react with the surface. So for example, with the red wax material, at the bottom of the modifiers, you'll see the source image is actually two spheres. The lighting on these spheres is actually baked into the material itself. The matte cap materials are popular among artists because of the organic quality they give to the sculpted artwork. A large library of matte cap materials comes pre-installed with ZBrush and you can find even more user-created matte cap materials at pixelogic.com. These are all available for free download. Let's take a look at how we can use matte cap materials and also how we can customize them to develop a unique look for our model. So in this example, I have the matte cap white material applied to the Centaur. And as you can see, it's a very nice overall white kind of shading. If I do a BPR rendering, you can see that the result looks very nice. However, it's just a basic default material. And one thing that's important to understand about the way that ZBrush uses materials is materials are meant to be part of the creative process, part of the act of discovery while you're developing your model itself. The ability to change the materials while you're working and even edit the materials and create your own looks helps you not only to develop your idea of what you're trying to achieve, but also keeps you excited about the model, keeps you exploring, and keeps you focused on all the creative aspects of working in ZBrush. So I switched to the matte cap pearl material. Let's take a look at how we can edit this material in the material palette. Switching down to the modifiers, and I'm gonna hover over the preview, and you can see here's the source image that is generating the look of the matte cap pearl material. It's basically a single sphere that determines how the light is baked onto the surface. So in the modifiers for the matte cap pearl material, you can see as I adjust cavity detection, the cavities in the surface, the small recesses, become more or less prominent in the look of the material. So we can go for something that looks like a smooth organic surface to something that looks graphic or almost even drawn out by hand. I can also fine tune the sensitivity of the cavities by adjusting the cavity transition. Now you'll notice a lot of the sliders are labeled A or B, as in intensity A, intensity B. The way these sliders work depends on the type of matte cap that you're using. The matte cap pearl material uses an image of a single sphere. Only the sliders labeled A are going to have an effect on the material. So intensity A, depth A, and as you can see as I tweak these sliders, it has a huge impact on the way that the material looks and it updates in real time. Now the surface of the Centaur appears gray because the original source image is also gray, but I can easily change this by adjusting the hue A and also the saturation A sliders. So I can start to give it a green or purplish tint or whatever color I'd like simply just by moving these sliders around. That makes it very easy to update and very easy to experiment while you're working. Another important feature uh, is the ability to change the orientation of the lighting in the material. So the light source is baked into the material. In other words, the direction from which the specular highlights are shining on the surface. But even though this is baked into the original image, I can still change its position by moving the orientation sliders. The ability to change the orientation of the lighting uh, gives you an added level of flexibility. For example, even though the lighting and the highlights are baked into the material, when you render with VPR and you have shadow casting turned on, the lights in the scene are actually still going to cast shadows on the surface. 
you can run into a situation where the lighting direction that you've chosen for your scene is actually coming from a different direction than the highlights on the surface created by the matte cap material. So if I set a light that comes from the uh, direction of the upper left and it's shining down on the Centaur, I want to make sure that the highlights on the Centaur also match that direction. By changing the orientation, I can simply rotate the material around so that it matches the lighting when I render with VPR, and then my shadows will look correct in the final render. A good example of a material that uses both the A and B sliders is the red wax material. As I hover over the preview image, you can see that there are two spheres. The sphere on the left is the A sphere, the sphere on the right is the B sphere. So by adjusting sliders labeled A or B, I'm adjusting the amount of influence that either the sphere on the right or the sphere on the left have over the look of the material. And I can do things like adjust the hue and the saturation of A and B independently and even the orientation. And this is very powerful because you can see how easy it is to create a very unique custom look for your model. You can start developing your own matte cap materials uh, by adjusting one of the presets that comes with ZBrush, or you can use the light cap interface to develop your own material from scratch. So for instance, as I open up the light cap interface, and uh, as long as I have a matte cap material selected in my material palette, when I start adding lights to light cap, you can see immediately that uh, I'm starting to affect the material directly. So if you look in the little material preview, uh, you can see how as I add green lights and additional lights to the light cap interface, the material updates in real time. And this is a great way to develop a very sophisticated material quickly. In this example, I've created a nice metallic look for my mech uh, just by spending some time in the light cap palette. And you'll notice I've created both diffuse and specular lights. And uh, this lighting has been baked into the material, and I have an A and a B channel. The A channel has the diffuse lighting, and the B channel has the specular lighting. And when I do a BPR render, you can see how beautiful it looks uh, on the model. And of course, even after creating the matte cap material with light cap, I can go into the modifiers and continue tweaking using the sliders just as I have done. So if I want to change the hue to add kind of a green military tint to the metal, I can easily do that by adjusting the hue sliders. And of course, once you've created a material, you'll want to save it. Uh, I usually like to save my custom materials in the Z materials folder. And by doing this, uh, when I open Lightbox under the materials, you'll see that my custom material is there ready for me to use in future ZBrush sessions. And after I developed my lighting through Lightcap and baked it into my material, and even rendered with BPR, I still have another level of control on top of that, which is the BPR filters. Using these filters, I can fine tune the finished look all within ZBrush and continue tweaking and designing until I'm completely satisfied with the overall look. ZBrush has been designed to maximize your creativity while bringing your concept to reality. Materials, lighting, and rendering in ZBrush are all options which are available for you to use while the sculpt is in progress. Because of the speed and the ease of use, you have the freedom to test your look as you sculpt, trying out different ideas constantly and being able to present these ideas to your client or to your art director in the best possible light.